Good morning, church. Good morning, Father. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. I cannot hear you. Happy Easter. Oh, my Lord. God is good. All the time. And all the time, raise the roof. I, I let, let me see. How many of you have good memory? Raise up your hand. How many of you have good memory? Let me see if... Uh, okay, you can put it down because I'm going to sing something and I don't know if you really have good memory. Huh? Let me see if you really have good memory in trying to memorize what I sing. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Did you get that? Did you get that? I'm gonna sing it again. I'm gonna sing it again. Listen first. Don't 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 uh, don't sing with me. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Let me see if you got this, huh? Sing with me. One, two, three. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Then the second verse. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive. I will repeat it again. Listen. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive. Sing with me. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive forever. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive. Okay, we're going to sing it together. huh? With clap of hands, you follow me. One, two. One, two, three. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Raise up your hand. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive. Now everybody stand up. Everybody, adults, join us. I see four people not joining us among the adults. Join us. You're part of this church. You're not apart from the church. One, two, three. One, two, three. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forever. Louder. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Raise up. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, my Jesus is alive. My Jesus is what? Alive. I cannot hear you. My Jesus is what? Alive. Oh, you can sit down now. <laughs> you guys are awesome. There's one more thing that we are going to do that I usually do during Christmas and Easter here at St. Walter when there were thousands of people you know last Sunday there were 4,000 people that were here I know what one two three what? how about your faces it's supposed to be like one two three what? 4,000 people this is what we're gonna do we're gonna do the wave ah 
Uh, you're going to start over here. You're going to stand up and say, Jesus. And then you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. And the last one was on top of there. Can you do this? Where should I start? Over there or over here? Who's going to do it better? <laughs> okay, we're going to do it twice. Are you guys ready? Not yet. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> One, two, three. You guys were awesome. You guys were awesome. Think about this. Think about this, huh? Why is Easter so important for us Christians? Uh, why is Easter so important? Easter is so important for us Christians because when Jesus died, nobody knew that he was going to live, to be alive again. In fact, his followers have deserted him. They are so afraid. A lot of them already have fled the city of Jerusalem, and those that stayed were like, "How can we get out of the city of Jerusalem without even getting caught?" Even Mary, his mother, was with the woman, and they were crying. And his friends, the one that were very courageous, the, you know, Mary Magdala, Mary of Bethany, and then another Mary, huh? uh, you know, was going to the, uh, uh, to the cemetery to make sure that, you know, to do all the spices again around the dead body of Jesus. Nobody, even Rome. The biggest empire that has ever uh, uh, existed on earth, you know, thought, yes, he's dead. He's dead. And you know what happened? You know what happened? Because of what happened with Jesus of Nazareth, the world was divided into B.C., before Christ, and A.D., you know, after Christ. And you know what happened? In 380, February 17, 380, Emperor Theodosius made Christianity the religion of the empire. Woo! What happened from them, you know, scattering, afraid, then becoming, you know, the religion of the empire? So much so that today there are more than 2 billion Christians around the world. Two billion Christians that had Easter. And what happened that everything we do as Christians wants to reflect on this Jesus of Nazareth? What happened that, you know, we established thousands of hospitals, hundreds of thousands of schools? What happened that priests like me, there's about 800,000 priests throughout the world that have given their lives for this Jesus, and about two million missionaries that are not even priests or religious, families around the world, you know, helping the poor. What happened that in Ukraine, the first people that came to help the people of Ukraine were Christians, Catholics, and today right now are still helping over there. What happened? Woo! This is the reason why we have St. Walter's School, Easter. The reason why I became a priest. Easter. And do you know what? People who do not believe in God, we call them atheists. They are also sons and daughters of God, by the way. But do they have a hospital caring for the sick? No. Do they have a school, especially in third world countries in which children cannot have access to school just like have our mountaintop schools in the Philippines that are teaching them good education? No. Do they have orphanages? Were they the first ones who went to Ukraine? No. Because there is no reason to do all these things. While we do, His name is Jesus. I love the gospel today, by the way. 
Because this is one of the great stories that we have of Jesus. Because the resurrection of Jesus has been one of the most recorded in history that has happened. See, so many people throughout 3,000 years have claimed that they are gods. But not one of them rose from the dead. Not one. Except our Jesus. Huh? And this Jesus, every time he will see, you know, his, his friends... He would tell them, peace be with you, they, because they were afraid. They thought that he was a ghost. I, we heard that. But then he showed them his wounds. Well, by the way, it's not the palms, you know, that where Jesus was nailed. It was here that Jesus was nailed. Huh? And then the feet. Huh? And then the side. And thousands of others around his body. Because... Jesus, when he was showing them, the disciples, Jesus is telling them, give me your wounds. Give Jesus your wounds. Huh? Because when we give Jesus our wounds, when we give Jesus our wounds, he transforms them into his own resurrected wounds, into something that is beautiful. So the question I ask you today, St. Walter's School, is what wounds do you have? You know, when I was a kid, I have wounds that still I have today, by the way. And these are, let me share with you a couple of wounds that I still struggle with. You know, I have always been afraid of public speaking. Afraid. Afraid. I remember when I was in fourth grade, I would turn cold white when the teacher called me. I would never raise up my hand. Afraid of public speaking. And the second fear that I have is this. I'm afraid of leading people. Leadership. And every day since I met Jesus personally in high school, when he changed my life, and I met him as a personal God. He started to change those wounds that I have. Every time, every morning when I give him those two wounds that I have, he will tell me, Mario, do not be afraid. You know, before I came here, I told Jesus, Jesus, I'm afraid to speak to the kids. Mario, do not be afraid. And throughout this day, so many things will happen that I'm going to be the pastor, the priest of this parish. So many things. I have a funeral. I'm meeting people, counseling, you know, families that are broken, breaking apart that would want me to be there. I have confessions of young teenagers today. And I tell Jesus, Jesus, I am afraid. Can I just give you these wounds? And he takes my wounds. And he transforms them. Can I just ask you to put both of your hands by your heart and close your eyes, bow your heads. What wounds do you carry, my dear friend? What fears do you have? Fear of making friends, of excelling in school, of really listening to your parents, of forgiving somebody, fears of, of having a great relationship with a best friend, or forgiving your best friend for the end time? Is it fear of you do not know yet what do you want to become when you grow old, you mature? Each of us have many, many wounds. Let's give them to Jesus today. Give them to Jesus. And say these words with me. Dear Jesus, thank you that you have risen from the dead. The you dead. have come out of your tomb. You have come out of your tomb. Lord, I come to you. Lord, I come to with you. all my fears and wounds. With all my fears and wounds. Sometimes, sometimes I'm still in the tomb myself. I'm still in the tomb myself. Feeling cold. Feeling cold. Feeling alone. Feeling alone. Afraid of the world. Afraid of the but world. But here you are. But here you are. Calling me by name. 
calling me by name. Declaring to me your love. Declaring to me your Telling love. me I'm forgiven. Telling me I'm Telling forgiven. me I'm free. Telling me I'm Telling free. me I'm loved forever. Telling me I'm loved forever. Give me the grace, Lord Jesus. Give me the grace to come Lord out Jesus. of my tomb. To come out of my tomb. To embrace you with my wounds. To embrace you with my wounds. This is my prayer. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Sing. My Jesus is alive. Alive forevermore, alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Please.